Greetings Ravens, Fiot here and in this video I'm going to be breaking down why the baton is the most underutilized and underappreciated weapon in all of Armored Core 6. Enjoy this little snippet of gameplay and then we're going to jump right into the information. Let's get to it. The attacks performed by the baton are divided into three categories. A single strike, a single charge strike and a combo. Single strike goes as follows. You just attack the enemy once, building a bit of charge and a bit of stagger. As the stagger dissipates, I'm going to perform a combo attack, which builds a lot of stagger and a lot of charge. Now, the charge is very, very important on this thing. This AC that we're fighting has already built a bit of charge because we have been attacking it. But even if not charged, a charge is attacked by this thing. will in most cases overload the system, create an explosion that builds further charge and deals a chunk of damage. If my math and the math I've been cross-checking online is correct, it should be 1500 damage out of the charge, not including the initial strike. Let's see it again. This is insane. And it is insane for a very simple reason. I'm gonna use the baton and I want you to keep your eyes on the recharge meter on the bottom left of my reticle. That is how fast it will recharge. So if I combo, and then I combo again, it doesn't matter if I went in for a charge attack or if I just comboed the enemy to death. So trying this on a fresh AC, I'm going to start a combo chain. Wait a couple seconds for the recharge. Keep going. With two applications, the enemy is staggered and has lost about 60%, I'll say, of the HP. I'm going to do a charge now. And as you can see, the damage is equivalent to a combo and a half, approximately. This thing deals a shitload of damage, a shitload of fast. So why is this thing not as prominent as one would think? It has to do with the range of the thing. And I'm not talking the range when you get boosted towards the enemy to attack them. Because as you can see here with the rig I am running, I have a very good boost towards the enemy from my boosters when I'm melee. I can hit them no problem from a hundred meters away. The issue is the length of the baton itself. When you swing, let's say, Moonlight, you have an arc. If the enemy is within that arc, they will get hit. It also fires projectiles, so even if the physical form will not hit, the projectile probably will. If the enemy sidesteps or side boosts against the baton, you're probably gonna whiff. So you really want to be sure that they are where you want them to be so the attack or the combo chain that you will perform will land. That's why I mostly recommend you go for charge hits. If the enemy is exposed, and I'm gonna get them into a stagger state to show you what I mean. One more application. Even if you stagger them with the baton, the recharge time of the thing is so fast, you will probably be able to go in and finish them off with the baton itself of course there is an alternative and you know how much i love the lance if you've been following the channel if you go in with the lance switch to the baton you can 100 guarantee go in with a charge attack that will also chain into the explosion so one application of the lance and one usage of the baton and the enemy is almost 40% HP. Is that as impressive as the Ashmid? No, by any stretch. But there are a couple of differences. First and foremost, a fully charged Ashmid attack does not have any kind of tracking, any kind of lands. You have to be in their face a pixel away from their chassis in order to connect. This thing will connect from the other side of the planet. Second, 
The enemy is getting hit by the overcharge attack. So even if you have to step away from the initial engagement to get some room or survive the retaliation, they are still getting damaged afterwards. And that is damage they cannot avoid. It'll take a second, it will build up, it will explode. It might net you a win against an enemy, even if you are not attacking them. You're just setting yourself up for success as soon as you manage to launch this attack. It's not considered an energy weapon, so you don't have to worry about energy weapon spec with this thing. You can just go for boosters that help your launch. I'm gonna show you what I mean. Here I'm using Kikaku. If you check the melee attack thrust, it's a full bar. That is why we're launching so far away. If I change this for something that doesn't have good launch, Let's say I change to gills and move at 100 meters. I can't reach my target because my boosters are not what I need. So the baton is very, very useful if you spec correctly. How can we help it? Of course, you all know that when it comes to arms, the melee specialization helps. Every one point over 100 melee specialization gives you 0.5% added damage. If you go for the 150, you get 25% more damage. So Firmeza is a very good set of arms if you want to have balance between using firearms and melee. That's why it's my favorite. But if you go Basho, it has 100% melee specialization. Okay. It's the strongest one when it comes to using melee weapons. So if I use this with a Basho, the results are even more impressive. Let's try it with a good booster this time. As you can see, I go in faster and can go further with it and deal more consistent damage. Two obligations of this thing is 50% of the tester ACs A. 50% for a thing that cools down in less than two seconds and of course you're gonna say yeah man but this is the taster AC you're not trying it against Balteas or anything but trust me guys PV or PVP this thing will serve you very very well you have to take under consideration the fact that there is a stat that determines how prone to this overcharge or incineration effect the ac is so you're not gonna get flat results out of every single enemy that is to be expected stats may vary but adding pressure to your fight using this thing having the enemy think if it's a human being that is that they are close to that extra amount of explosive damage is both mentally exhausting and overall very effective if you play your cards right i think people underestimate the baton because they look at the damage per hit in a combo and think that it's nothing to write home about but there is a slew of technical nuanced applications that you can use to your advantage and shred the enemy opposition if they have no resistances against these build-ups they're gonna feel really bad about what's happening here i can guarantee you that and of course, it gives you options because you can keep building pressure. Recharge time on this thing is ridiculously low. I think it's the lowest out of any of the substantial melee weapons. You see the Hawksley on my back as well. I don't know if I explained why I am using it, but the Hawksley is a very, very good tool for a very, very simple reason. It is an added turret on your back that will keep building pressure and used with a baton, it is more pressure on top of the already existing pressure. So they have no time to come out of the stagger buildup. Stagger keeps building up. And you can get them into some sick stun locks that will ultimately get the job done for you passively. It's added guns and added damage that you don't need to trigger yourself. Everything that can build up in Armored Core is beneficial to the user. If you can have stuff that ticks over time, it will help you. If you can have stuff that builds over time and then it procs, 
it will help you. So building an AC using this method can be extremely effective. Things that will hit on demand and things that will hit over time to build stagger or accumulate damage. I hope this was useful guys. I'm trying to cover all the obscure strange tools in AC6. I've made a lot of vids about AC6. You can check my stuff out by visiting the channel, the specific section there, or by just typing the channel name and Armor Core 6. You'll get a lot of choices for stuff to watch. Thank you for being here. Sub, like, and hit the notification bell for more content like this. And until next time, be well, stay frosty, and always strive for perfection. Cheers!